later today just to get this list of restaurants so we can that are open versus not to yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> just let me know when you want me to start talking christine to start this let's just give fix a couple minutes um to get in Hey, Josh. Yeah. How are you? Good. Just living. You ready? Uh, yeah, I'm just, so Covington just let their, um, uh, you know, put their executive order out yesterday about how they're going to kind of try to do, help the restaurants with the outdoor seating stuff. So today I've been running around trying to uh, help all these restaurant owners who are trying to open tomorrow, draw out their patio diagrams, oh. kind of make sure everybody's doing six feet and everything and then uh so we can get them temporary dining permits for the outside sidewalk public sidewalks and uh we're going to close down some parking spaces and things of that nature so earlier this week i was writing all the policy and everything for that and then uh, and then so it all went to legal and stuff and you know did that and then uh the mayor signed his executive order yesterday so it kind of it's thrown me into a bit of a frenzy here, but uh, it's, it's been fun. I'm glad to be back working. <laughs> All right, we can go ahead and get started if you want. Okay, I think we are gonna go ahead and, and start here. We wanted to try to start on time to value your time. And we have a lot of great information to share and three great panelists webinar today that are really uh, going to be helpful to us. So I wanted to uh, welcome you all today to this uh, presentation. My name is Pat Frew, director of the Covington Business Council, if we've never met before. Uh, we want to welcome you to this webinar that is essentially on reopening the economy. The Northern Kentucky Health District has been very helpful and been a great partner in assisting us as the governor has come out uh, with his new order allowing restaurants to open under restrictions. Uh, by gubernatorial order, restaurants in Kentucky can, starting tomorrow, welcome back customers indoors at 33% capacity and can offer additional outdoor dining. And on our panel today is Steve Devine. He is the Director of Environmental Health and Safety with the Northern Kentucky Health District. Steve, welcome, thank you. Good to see you. And we have and we have John Ellison, president of the Northern Kentucky Restaurant Association and one of the owners of Hofbrau House Newport. John, great to have you with us. Thank you. And finally, last but not least, we have Josh Rhodes. He's representing Recov, that's short for Recover Covington, the city's newly created task force to help Covington's restaurants and the overall economy get jump started. So before I have the panelists jump in today, our format is such we will have each panelist share information related to each of their roles in getting these eateries up and running in a way that's safe to the general population. And then after they're finished, if you have follow-up questions or comments, we will be filtering that through the chat box. So feel free to provide those, particularly if you don't get some of the information that you felt you needed as part of the presentation by these three gentlemen. I've also encouraged the panelists to have an exchange with one another uh, after each has had a chance to provide their initial comments. So without further delay, we'll start uh, with Steve, then we'll have John and Josh. Steve? <coughs> All right, thanks, Pat. Um, I'll just say real quick uh, that, you know, we've been dealing with uh, COVID-19 uh, at the health department for a while now, unfortunately, uh, since really late January, early February. Um, and I'm glad that we're finally at the states where uh, businesses have been able to start to, to open up uh, if, uh, under limitations that I know are still going to be difficult. Uh, this is going to be a learning curve, I think, for, for everybody as they, they open up the businesses. Hopefully, they've had, had the time uh, to be able to, uh, to prepare for it. Uh, I know we provide guidance uh, and answered or tried to answer a lot of questions from folks, uh, you know, restaurant wise and, and other businesses. Uh, getting to this point, and I'm sure there'll be more moving forward, uh, but it's a partnership. So, you know, it's, it's not just uh, uh, the businesses, uh, which certainly it is, uh, and it's not just a health department, 
uh, but also it's the customers, you know, so we've all got a, a play in this for it to be successful. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, uh, our, our hope and best intentions to, to help assist in that process. Uh, just, you know, to go over some of the highlights uh, without going into the, the weeds on a lot of things. Uh, certainly happy to answer questions moving forward. Uh, but on some of the things I think that are most pertinent, uh, you know, big picture for uh, restaurants, food service in general as they, they open back up and for the ones who haven't already been able to operate is that, you know, the things that you've been doing, obviously you are encouraged to continue doing, uh, whether that's, uh, you know, drive through if you have that, uh, delivery and takeout. I know a lot of businesses have, uh, have done that and continue to do that uh, and certainly is encouraged to do that as well, even as we, uh, you know, get to the point where you can open up and do outside dining uh, as well as uh, inside dining uh, with that 33%, uh, uh, you know, table limitation or seating limitation. Uh, but, you know, some of the important things uh, are uh, social distancing, obviously. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the six foot spacing between individuals in general. Uh, so whether that's, uh, in this case, staff to staff, you know, with, with coworkers, uh, or, and certainly with uh, the, uh, the customers as they come in and between the customers themselves, especially those that are not from the same household, uh, that's an important part, uh, you know, that distancing to, to help curb the spread uh, of COVID-19, uh, which is what this is all about. Uh, you know, wearing masks uh, and uh, putting in some barriers uh, as necessary, whether that's plexiglass uh, or by other means uh, to uh, help uh, you know, enhance that separation distance as well. Uh, the um, outside dining obviously has the open air advantage to it and does not have other than how much space you've got to work with, doesn't have a seating uh, limitation other than maintaining those, uh, those setbacks uh, that we've talked about. Uh, inside, you, know, <clears throat> you may have to change the flow uh, of your your uh, your business a little bit as far as where people come in and, and go out to help keep that separation um, uh, as well as obviously you know the, the tables and chairs being away from each other um, reducing or limiting your party size at any particular table uh, to uh, no greater than 10 and I know the intent is for that to be kind of a, a household per table um, uh, and so you know to the best of the ability that that's able to be done um, also, um, you know, the, uh, not just the seating areas, but also the, the kind of the common areas, you know, there's guidelines for that, uh, as well, as far as, you know, people have been waiting in cars a lot now, uh, for picking things up, you know, carry out, what have you, um, that would be, uh, one possibility that's a, a good way to go, uh, when possible and calling people up, uh, you know, when, when, uh, they can come into the restaurant reservations for those type of food services that can do that. I know that doesn't work for everybody, um, but finding ways to keep people separated uh, so there's not a big group waiting just in, you know, kind of lobby, common areas, or even outside your door before they can come in the, to seat uh, is also a, an important part of this. Uh, marking things on the floor so that you have some distance there, you know, to judge things by as well. Uh, just to give people guides, you know, really want this to, uh, to be something that hopefully you uh, at least temporarily becomes a little bit more natural so people kind of know what to expect and signage, whether that's tape on the ground or signs up on the wall or what have you, uh, I think will help with that as well. Using disposable equipment, uh, whether that's condiments on the tables as opposed to common salt and pepper shakers and ketchup and those type of things, using it, things that are disposable, uh, basically one-time use. Uh, same thing with either disposable tablecloths uh, or uh, not using tablecloths at all, so you can disinfect them between uh, menus, you know, disposable menus or something that can be disinfected in between uses, uh, no self-service, uh, you know, salad bars and buffets can't be used uh, unless the staff, you know, staff member are the ones actually doing that for the customer. Uh, don't use unwrapped items that, you know, a lot of people would put their hands on. Uh, as well as uh, another thing of importance are, you know, your protection, your, your PPE, uh, personal protective stuff, but basically wearing a mask, staff have to wear a mask at all times, uh, and, and customers are encouraged to until obviously they're sitting down to eat. Um, there are some exceptions to that, uh, which I'd be happy to answer questions to, uh, but in general, keep in mind that staff should be wearing a mask unless they're alone in the office or, or, or some other space like that. Um, 
hand sanitizer and hand washing. And keep in mind that the food code still is in effect. So the things you'd be doing anyway as a staff member, uh, you know, are still gonna apply in the dining area and certainly in the kitchen area. But making that available, hand sanitizer more readily, and especially even for customers if that's feasible, is also a good way to go. Uh, clean and disinfection is gonna be important. Um, and so besides, you know, hand washing and those type of things, uh, you know, making sure you're doing all those common touch areas, not just tables, uh, but, you know, doorknobs and anything that you know, is going to have push buttons or uh, bathrooms, certainly anywhere where you've got, uh, you know, more than one person who's going to be uh, touching a, a surface, clean and disinfect on a, on a regular basis. And in some of those cases, especially like tables uh, and, and things like that, it's going to be uh, needed every time you shift out, you know, one, uh, one group from a table to the next. Uh, as well as some things that are going to be important uh, related to training your staff. So hopefully you've had a chance to do that. And if not, you certainly need to do that uh, as soon as possible so the staff know what they need to do to be able to meet the guidelines and so that they can have a successful interaction, uh, not just with their coworkers, but also with the customers. Uh, so I, I think uh, in a nutshell, those are the big items. Uh, and I'll be happy you know, later on to answer any specific questions or give more detail. Okay, great. And we will get back to you. John, you're next. Welcome. Yeah, sorry, I, I got kicked off there. So I moved to another another area. Oh. Um, yeah, what um, uh, kind of what we're doing here is, um, you, you know, I guess, uh, first off, we, we already what we talked about at the Restaurant Association was a lot of us are already doing things like we should have we should be doing like all along such as using the quad sanitizer on everything in the kitchen, making sure that our dish machines um, are sanitizing to the right temperatures. Like, like what we do is we have a, um, uh, we went ahead and purchased one of those uh, pucks that we send through our dish machine twice a day to make sure it's registering the right uh, temperature and as part of our, our line checks that, that we do each day. Um, but some things that we changed was, um, like we're now putting our silverware after it's been sanitized in a plastic bag. And then that silverware is in a bin that is, uh, it's a Lexan that's covered. So when the customer sits down at a completely empty table, uh, let's say there's, there's four people sit down, the server will bring, and the servers, there's some new things, they're gonna have gloves on. Uh, they're gonna be encouraged to uh, wash their hands a lot more often. Um, and they're gonna be wearing masks and they're gonna bring them their appetizer plates, napkins, and also their silverware. And then during the court, um, they're also gonna have a, a menu that's a one-time use. We already have them in stock. We have, uh, we just got them yesterday, we have 50,000. So I think this is gonna be the way we're gonna just continue on to use the, uh, it's actually a placemat. Um, and they can use it as a placemat when they're done, they can take it home, throw it away, whatever they want. Um, one of the positive things is now everybody that comes to your restaurant has a carryout menu at their home. Uh, so we kind of looked at uh, that, that would be something uh, nice for all of our guests to have. And then every time they come, they're gonna get a brand, brand new one. Um, uh, some other things um, that we're doing in the front of the house, instead of using a, a, a quad sanitizer, we purchased, like I said earlier, it's a new sanitizer from uh, from EcoLab. It's a cleaner and a disinfectant. And we're going to use that every like when the when the uh, customers leave, uh, everything will be taken off of the tables. Uh, they'll be wiped down and sanitized, and and also the uh, uh, we have chairs and benches, so they're going to be sanitized as well. Uh, we've already uh, upgraded our floor plans, uh, where the tables are six feet apart, and we've also done that with the outside area as well. And uh, we actually have, um, a couple of days ago, we just got our sanitizer in. And I think it was made at a tequila factory because when you rub your hands, it smells like you just took a shot of tequila. It's kind of, it's like, oh, you want some, uh, some lemon and salt with that. But uh, um, yeah, we have plenty of uh, sanitizer for the guests to use. And we've also, um, like we were discussing earlier, we've changed our flow pattern where we're gonna have a, um, we talk to our employees who work at the door and they're going to be they're, they're going to have a, a clicker of people coming in and then we're kind of lucky we have a, a an exit door out by our beer garden so we're going to have an entrance and an exit and they're going to be uh they're probably about 50 yards apart they're pretty far apart 
Um, so then we'll be clicking people coming in and also keeping track of people that are leaving and also maintaining the six feet. I uh, really can't think of it. Oh, um, we actually have these now. So we're going to be taking the employees uh, temperatures each day. Um, we got this from Eco Lab. It's real quick, uh, just a one touch thing on the forehead. So we'll be uh, checking our employees before they, uh, they start their shifts. And then we'll keep um, that in the logbook. Uh, John, you also had one more audio visual I think you had with the menus. Did you, I didn't see you pull that out. You were, you were. Oh, struggling. it's actually, uh, it's actually, I, I can go get one in a minute. I just had okay. to run out of an office because my internet connection went. Okay, well, we'll, we'll move on to, to Josh and, and uh, when we have our questions among each other in a few minutes, um, we'll have you uh, show that off too. We're, we're very high tech in this presentation. That's so. right. <laughs> Good, good, good info there. Josh? All right. Uh, hi, my name is Josh Rhodes, and I'm representing uh, Recov, uh, which is Recovery Covington. Um, executive order was just signed yesterday by the mayor, um, where we put in um, some, I guess, some guidelines and uh, some policy on allowing restaurants to expand their outside temporary dining, with uh, restaurants being limited to a third of their capacity. Um, you know, obviously, from an economic development standpoint, you know, we, 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 we the city feel like we need to uh, help support the restaurants by allowing them to try to maximize their outdoor seating spaces by utilizing uh, public right of way, uh, you know, sidewalks and uh, off street parking. Um, so and so basically, you know, what we've done is uh, just kind of uh, amended the current uh, outdoor seating license to incorporate the governor's guidelines uh, as far as reopening and reopening safely. Um, you know, we're looking at the weather situation developing over the weekend. Uh, the weather's going to be nice. Um, and so, you know, we've encouraged business owners to do this in a responsible manner. Uh, be prepared, you know, uh, have your staff prepared, you know, as Steve said, train them uh, in, a, in an effort to, uh, you know, maintain crowd control, um, you know, to, um, you know, to uh, keep that six foot uh, distance and uh you know we want to encourage people to be respectful um you know and that's part of the recov uh line of thinking is um you know uh, recovery respect and so you know we want people to you know the public you know the consumer to you know uh, realize that, uh, you know, the staff and the restaurants are experiencing, you know, inconveniences as well. And uh, responsibility falls on all of us to try uh, to, um, you know, to, you know, make this reopen go well. Um, so, you know, I've, we're working with all the local restaurants, providing any assistance as far as, uh, you know, expedited um, licensing on their outdoor seating permits. Uh, we've made direct contact with the ABC where we have a line to them where if somebody's expanding into uh, the parking uh, parking spaces and off of their uh, permitted areas um, that you know we can uh, get that turned around quickly in Frankfurt. So um, everybody's been very helpful. We're very happy to have the team and the task force that we have. Um, you know we're, we're really excited about the recov and the launch of the economy here and uh, you know look forward to uh, getting things back on track. Great. Um, a couple of questions for you, Josh, and we'll, we'll, we'll now kind of talk among each other. Uh, how many, do you have a sense of how many Covington restaurants are reopening percentage wise? And did, does that surprise you based upon what you thought you would get in terms of response? Um, I'm not aware of a lot of restaurants not opening. Uh, we haven't been like totally inundated yet with the uh, temporary outdoor seating uh, permits. Because uh, when you look at Covington, you, you've got a, a good mix of restaurants and then you have a good mix of bars. So obviously the bars aren't able to open right now. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as outdoor seating permits and this, this downtown direct a uh, area, you know, I'm still waiting on a couple places in Latonia uh, and in other areas of the city to reach out. But, uh, you know, I would say, you know, from my anticipation, I, I think we'll see 80% or so, you know, uh, reopen. I know a couple places, I talked with uh, Stephen from Autos and, uh, um, in, or not Stephen, but, um, 
oh, uh, his name's uh, Paul. Yeah. But talk to Paul, and Paul is, uh, you know, he's playing on Frida's opening right away, but Otto's, you know, being a little bit of a smaller place, not having a lot to grow on the patio, he's going to take his time there and let it lag out a little bit. Um, you know, so we should expect to see that um, some as well. You know, we really worry about, you know, uh, you know, some of those smaller places, you know, hopefully, we'll, you know, a third of the capacity. I mean, it makes it very difficult on restaurant owners. Uh, it's, I mean, I'm sure John will tell you it's already hard enough at 100% capacity, you know, always trying to make everything uh, play out the way you want it to as far as profitability. Um, so, but, uh, you know, we, we expect a good turnout of restaurants to reopen. Okay, okay. Um, I wanted to turn it back to Steve, and this is something that I think all three of you can comment on, but um, looking at what happened and what transpired in Cincinnati last weekend, um, and I guess it was good that Northern Kentucky had a chance to kind of learn from Cincinnati's best practices and mistakes. Um, what, um, what kind of challenges do you face, Steve? You know, we talk about enforcement and we don't know, is, is the health district gonna have people on hand in restaurants to make sure that people are following the rules? Is it up to local municipalities with police departments, inspectors like that? How are you working with those different governmental groups to make sure that um, restaurants are, are doing their best? And of course, you also mentioned there are three parties here. There, there's the, the health officials, there are the restaurants, and then there's the patrons. And it's one thing and the best of intentions for restaurants to do well, but if patrons misbehave, you know, that creates all kinds of unintended consequences. So talk about the enforcement part and how you see that playing out, you know, early on here. Sure, I, I think there is gonna be a learning curve and there's gonna be some, some mistakes made, uh, you know, uh, but I think in general, uh, you know, our intention has always been going in to try to be a, a resource to help the businesses. Um, and hopefully part of what we've done as far as our messaging to the general public uh, will help as well. Uh, I saw what has happened in other areas uh, when places have opened up. So, uh, you know, to, to the enforcement part of it specifically, yes, uh, that it does fall on the health department, uh, but also falls on the, the facility. So hopefully, uh, you know, you've got a strong manager uh, at, at a, a restaurant and have trained uh, their staff to be able to deal with those things early on so it doesn't get out of hand. Uh, like we've seen that happen in other areas. And we have worked with the, the local jurisdictions, whether that's a county or a city, depending on where the, the business is at. Uh, and I think everybody's on the same game plan, which is, oh, you know, we're, we're going in with the best uh, of, uh, of ideas, that things are, are gonna go well, and, and we're addressing them as we needed to based on complaints uh, or things that are brought to our attention. But certainly the, the hope going in is that uh, the public will, will be happy that they're having these things start to open up uh, and the businesses uh, were early on work with their customers to make sure that, uh, that they're kind of following that practice, uh, you know, from the start. Um, John and Josh, as you, if you've talked to restaurants, what are they concerned about in terms of compliance and, and uh, their role in all of this? Um, I will pretty much see um, the restaurant operators I have spoke to, um, you know, there was a lot of uh, confusion on the guidelines where it said like a restaurant must or a restaurant should. And I know that's a big uh, confusion. So we've kind of, um, you know, everyone's just, you know, it's kind of a lot of restaurants really do a lot of the, uh, the correct things as far as making sure your, your silverware is sanitized and you're, you're wiping down your tables. It's just um, what we're trying to do is incorporate everything to make, because our ultimate goal is to, to make sure the customer feels safe when they come in and we're doing the right things. And I think the only way you can do that is do the, the, the right things, like keep your table six feet apart, control the number of people that are in your restaurant, um, and just sanitize and, and wash hands. That's, that's really what, um, what the Restaurant Association talked about a lot the other day. Um, and Josh, I know you have uh, police and fire and those people represented on the task force. So you probably talked about enforcement and working up the health district. How do you see that working out in collaboration down there? Yeah, I mean, definitely the city's going to be keeping an eye on it. Um, you know, they definitely uh, have made a point. Uh, you know, we've used the language of no seat, no service. Um, you know, if, you, if you're not able to get into a restaurant, move on. 
Um, we put a public message out there, you know, restaurants are open more than just that window of six to nine, you know, for a dinner rush or something like that. We can try to encourage the public to think about that and maybe eat at off peak hours or go out and visit these establishments then. Um, you know, and, you know, we, we've talked to the restaurants, we've encouraged them, you know, I mean, you have these policies, you know, the governor's recommended people wear face coverings to affect, to change your traffic flow of the restaurant. If a guest gets up, uh, they are to be encouraged. And, uh, you know, if it's the restaurant's policy for, you know, that, you know, we want the, the guests to be wearing a face mask, then, you know, it, then it's the restaurant staff. And, and as you, as John said, a strong manager, or Steve said, um, you know, to, to enforce that policy and, and to, and, you know, and, and each restaurant has the right to refuse service. Um, you know, if people are going to come in and they're not going to respect the guidelines and the rules and they're going to risk other people and not only the business of the restaurant, then the restaurant has the right to, to ask them to, you know, politely leave. Um, you know, it, it's a stern stance, but uh, again, you know, we, we don't want to see the large crowds gathering and, uh, you know, bar owners, you know, not making the right decisions as far as, you know, uh, social distancing and guidelines. Um, and so, you know, we saw that across the river and, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the weather is looking nice for this weekend, but, uh, you know, we're going to really do our best to try to police it and, uh, you know, we just really try to be in front of it and really encourage the restaurants to be cognizant of this. And uh, as you've seen Tom West press uh, in the press release yesterday, Tom West said, you know, it's potential, uh, you know, if, you know, the health department's having issues with a local restaurant and, uh, you know, we might have to revoke temporary outdoor seating license or, you know, some things of that nature uh, to get the message across to, uh, you know, the establishments in the public that, you know, this is something that uh, the Commonwealth and uh, the city of Covington is taking very seriously. Great. Um, I wanted to remind those of you who, who jumped on the call a little late, we are accepting questions in the uh, Q&A in the chat area. So if, if you have questions, you have information you were hoping to seek to find out today that uh, hasn't been uh, dispersed yet, uh, please feel free to do that. And we'll get to, we have a few questions and we'll get to those in a moment. Um, I wanted to, to direct this next question to John. John, as, as the different restaurants represented in the Restaurant Association on their board and other kinds of restaurants you're talking to in Northern Kentucky, <laughs> biggest fears and concerns coming into this in terms of uh, being um, compliant and uh, you know, allowing them to operate you know, efficiently and you know, cost efficiently and successfully. What are their biggest concerns? Um, I would say the biggest concerns, and it's a, like a concern we have is, um, but it's not a huge concern um, because we have a great relationship with our health inspector. Um, and if uh, Stacy comes by, it's, um, you know, we can, if, if, if there is an issue, we can figure out the best way to, to correct it. Um, because our ultimate, like I was saying earlier, I think everyone's ultimate goal is to make sure that um, that everything's clean, sanitized, and everyone's six feet apart. And uh, you know, we're we're actually not letting people wait in our lobby. Uh, we have a system where people can wait in their cars, or they can go go on a walk, and it'll, it'll text them when their table's ready. Um, so that's so that's kind of what Josh said was a really good point. Was if someone comes by and you know, there's a, a long wait. It's probably best to, to move on and find another place to go eat um, because you're not going to be able to, to come into our restaurant and, and grab a beer and, and just kind of stand there. You know, the only way, um, and I think that's a consensus for all, all the other restaurants, the only way you're going to be able to come in to the restaurant is when, you're, when you walk in and you go straight to your table. Uh, everyone's trying to minimize uh, people walking around the restaurants. Um, so I know it's going to be a learning curve. Uh, I know with us, we're going to uh, sit down um, each night um, as a as a management team, and uh, you know I'm sure the first day we're going to say, okay, what what worked great and what didn't work great. Um, but that's what we decided to do is to have a plan, um, and we're going to start it tomorrow, and we might have to make some changes uh, to make sure everyone's safe and healthy. Okay, and John, do you have a copy of the the uh, menu, the table menu that uh, you were? Yeah, 
forth so people yes. can see that. Yeah, what we have is a, uh, it's, it's, uh, we took our menu and it's gonna be a placemat. It's a disposable placemat. Um, if you don't want it, we'll throw it away for you. Um, but, uh, but, um, but this is it. It's a two-sided. We actually put some verbiage on it that says uh, no one has ever used this menu before and no one will ever use this menu except you. The next time you stop by, we'll give you another menu that will be just for you. This is just one more way we are maintaining the cleanest and safest environment for our guests. Um, so the host, uh, the host staff is going to hand these, not, they're, they're not going to hand them to the guests. They're going to actually, when they take them to their table, they'll have gloves on and they will take this menu and then it'll be placed right on the table for the guest. And then um, we, uh, what we didn't want to do is they have to um, clean them and sanitize them. And then it's, it's very hard to make sure uh, which one's clean and which one's sanitized on a menu. So by doing this, I think this is the best way to do it. Okay, great. And uh, we'll get to the questions in a moment. Any other comments based upon the questions I've asked you all or from each of your presentations where you want to elaborate anything before we uh, getting to the uh, participant questions? Hey, Pat, the only thing I would add is um, I don't want people to get complacent. You know, the reason all these guidelines and these restrictions and limitations not just on food service, but on you know, pretty much everything that we do uh, out once we leave our house anymore is because, you know, uh, COVID-19 is still out there. Uh, we know it's, you know, it's rolling into summertime and people want to go back to their normal activities. I want to go back to my normal activities. You know, we're, we're all the same. Uh, but, you know, we, we are still seeing uh, increase in cases in northern Kentucky. We expect to see that as the trend for some time to come. Uh, and the more people go out and interact, I know the more opportunity is for, uh, for there to be those exposures uh, when you run across more people than, uh, you know, outside of your, your household you've been dealing with otherwise. And so that's why, you know, these protective steps, these separation distances, uh, and a lot of these other things we've talked about today uh, are important. They're going to be important for a while uh, because, you know, it's still out there. And I think we're seeing that, you know, that although a lot of these cases are, are relatively mild, there's also cases that aren't. Uh, and we're learning something new about this virus every day. It's not something that uh, we've got a track record on like the flu. And so it's not a valid comparison anymore to say, you know, here's what the flu looks like versus COVID-19 because uh, we're seeing, we're finding out something scientifically about this virus uh, literally on a daily basis. Uh, and, uh, you know, some things are sometimes kind of scary. And so we just want people to remember that while we're still trying to incorporate more of, uh, you know, the, the activities we're accustomed to. Okay, let's get into the questions. And I think, Steve, this first one you can begin to address. Can patrons be required to have masks in order to gain entrance to a restaurant? Sure. So, yeah, right now the, the recommendation from the state guidance is that uh, we'd like them to, uh, obviously not when they're eating, but up until sitting down and getting your meal. But the restaurant or the facility itself can require uh, that the patron wear a mask and uh, if they don't, uh, then the, that facility can refuse uh, to, to have them come in and, and get service. Okay. Uh, a next, next question from Emily. Obviously, different restaurants present different levels of dining experience. What is the stance on using glassware, uh, wine glasses, uh, rocks, glasses, et cetera? Sure. Uh, disposable is a preference, but you can wear or can wear, can use uh, the, the other glassware uh, and regular utensils. That's why, you know, back to the, the kitchen side of the house, why it's so important to make sure that your, you know, your dishwasher and your three compartment sink, you know, all those type of disinfectant levels are, are appropriate because you're going to turn right around, which I know you would do it normally anyway, uh, and reuse those. But, you know, we've got one more thing to worry about now in terms of something you can catch. So uh, you can use things that are not disposable. Just make sure that you follow the proper practice to disinfect, clean and disinfect. Okay. And again, if you have questions, uh, submit them through the chat line and we'll get to them as quickly as we can. Another question from Tyler. Are caterers allowed to operate in phase one approved buildings? I guess that's for you, Steve. Sure. Kind of a trick question because you know, the food part of the operation uh, isn't the issue. It's the fact that you can't have large gatherings. Uh, so, you know, so I guess it kind of depends on where that food's going. So, the, you know, the kitchen operation part of it uh, isn't a problem. It's uh, the other end of the service. Uh, you know, right now you can't have, uh, you know, wedding receptions and, and 
uh, proms, lots of those type of situations where you typically think of catering. Uh, so if it's going somewhere, it's more the end, uh, end user than it is the operation itself at this point. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, yeah, I unmuted myself. Uh, Josh, I'm going to turn quickly to you. What, what about closing streets? I guess at this point, um, the city is not looking at closing any streets for restaurants. It's really more just parking spaces and extending out a little bit into the street without obstructing traffic. Is that right? Yes. I mean, right now it's, it's all about, you know, uh, discouraging large crowds and gatherings. Um, we're just afraid of the atmosphere. If you start closing down streets, putting tents up, um, things of that nature, uh, you know, the size of the crowds that could gather, um, you know, and then uh, obviously, you know, the city resources as far as police and fire um, are, you know, already exhausted um, as it is, you know, throughout this pandemic, you know, there's been, you know, crime and everything else has continued on. Um, so, you know, there's not the ability to put a cruiser at the end of each street that you're closing down um, and th some things of that of nature. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, what we've done is a good first step. And I think if we see things go smoothly and uh, the Republic uh, acts responsibly and the business owners act responsibly uh, and things go well for a little bit, we don't see a spike. You know, I think you'll see um, the city consider other things to kind of, um, you know, help help the restaurants and other businesses, uh, you know, encourage more business. But, uh, you know, right now we're going to play it safe and uh, try to do our best to keep everybody safe and keep Covington open, more importantly. Uh, last thing we need is, a, is another spike and uh, we have to endure another shutdown. Yeah, another, um, uh, not getting to another question here, but I know there's been probably a little confusion about um, bars that serve food. Has that been a big question? We'll start with Josh and go to John and then and get to Steve in terms of when the bars can reopen. But um, has that been something that's been a little bit of a head scratcher for uh, restaurants, Josh, and or bars in particular? In yes, yes and no. And this kind of gets back to John's comment earlier. There's a lot of shoulds and must. Um, you know, Governor Bashir um, is up every day at five o'clock, uh, you know, on TV, um, saying things and, uh, you know, they're putting, uh, things out, but bars for all intents and purposes are not to operate, um, you know, until July 1st. Um, there are specific liquor license out there that people apply for that are bars. Um, so, uh, but my interpretation of it is, is there is no seating at the bar area. Um, you're at a, uh, uh, so there should be no chairs in front of the bar. So if you're a bar that sells food and you have table space and a, a bit of a patio, um, you know, I could see them making the argument or, or the point like, Hey, I can't open. This is what I'm going to try to do. Um, and you know, uh, and I, for now, I, I think that would be okay as long as people are, are not seated at the, at the bar and uh, following the state guidelines and are seated. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, I think, again, the, the, the line we chose was no seat, no service. And, um, you know, I think that's what, uh, when you think about bars, you know, there's a lot of socializing, there's up, moving around. Um, you know, we're not going to have that anymore. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that develops. But, uh, you know, that's kind of been our interpretation of it. Josh or, or John, what about the restaurant associations? Okay. There's considerable discussion about uh, identifying okay. those, those that kind of serve food, et cetera. Um, no, in our call, we really didn't. Uh, we actually on our association board, we don't have a lot of bar operators. Uh, it's the majority of restaurants that well that we have bars in the restaurant um, but um, all of our members are restaurant operators and not just like a, a bar um, so there really wasn't any discussion around around that point. okay okay so Steve uh, July 1st for the bars right now that's what the governor has said and how will that look one of our questions was how will that look in terms of how stringent requirement will be for them when they can reopen? Sure. Uh, so currently the ones that can serve food, uh, piggyback off of Josh's comments, uh, yeah, you're not, you can't sit around a, a, the bar itself. You have to be sitting at a table uh, and, and doing the food service or drink service that way. Um, you know, the guy, it's a good question about what happens in July about bars in general outside of the food service part. The guidance isn't out there yet. Uh, 
I haven't been privy to even any of the discussions uh, of what that's going to look like at the state. So I don't know, you know, my expectation is within the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, we're probably going to with the guidance of what that's going to look like. Right now, I'm not sure what the restrictions are going to be and how they're going to divide that off of what they're already allowing uh, in terms of food service. So uh, I don't have a good answer uh, just yet on what that's going to look like come July. Okay. Just to kind of piggyback off Steve there, um, you know, the health department, uh, the public, uh, the cities, you know, everybody's learning this information at the same time. When it gets posted on the governor's website is when we're all made aware of it. Um, you know, I've, I've spoke with the health department plenty of times. And, uh, you know, when, when that documentation came out, I was one of the, that was one of the first calls I've made and uh, spoke with Ted Talley. And he, he goes, well, Josh, I just learned of it too. We're digesting it all right now too. And, and so that's important for people people to know that, you know, this is being led by Frankfurt. Um, you know, Frankfurt is using that website uh, as the utility to push information out to all of us to keep one clear message. And uh, so, you know, hopefully people won't be frustrated with that. Um, Steve, one comment I heard uh, before our session today was that uh, for people that have restaurants in different parts of Kentucky, they've seen enforcement applied differently in different areas. For instance, the rules in Louisville may not be the same rules in Covington or Lexington or Frankfurt. Um, do local municipalities have the opportunity to tweak those laws or should it be uniform across the state in terms of the guidelines uh, for reopening? Sure. Um, it, I think it's twofold. One, you have some bigger municipalities that may have things different from a zoning standpoint, for example, uh, that would be addressed differently, uh, as well as some of the, the other operation things where they might already have something in place that's a little more stringent on certain items. Generally speaking, it should be universal across the state. Uh, you know, we're following what the governor uh, and his, uh, his staff are pushing out. Uh, and at least in Northern Kentucky, I can specifically speak for our area, uh, we don't intend to be, uh, you know, more uh, stringent than what the governor's putting out on these things. We plan to follow along the, with those guidelines. And as Josh says, you know, we find out things the same time everybody else does. Uh, and we try to go along with uh, what comes out from uh, the state uh, and uh, be consistent across our district at least. Okay, uh, last call on outside questions on the chat line. If we don't have any more, we'll be uh, wrapping up soon. But one of the questions uh, that was posed that we haven't answered yet is, are restaurants required to post requirements, Jack wants to know, in their facility for patrons to see and read? Steve, do you want to tackle that? Sure, there, there are some specific signage and all that is on the state website that you can download as well. Uh, there are some specific signage that folks should be putting up for their own staff. It's really more reminders than anything, but for their own staff, as well as for the patrons to see. Uh, so if you go on the website, so I don't have to, I won't list them, um, the KY, covid19.ky.gov. That website's got lots of good information. We try to post a lot of that uh, links through our website as well. Uh, but there are some required signage uh, and you can find that on that website. Also from the city of Covington standpoint, uh, the city had hired BLDG Refuge to uh, design posters, signage, uh, everything for the recub. So there is a guide, uh, there's a toolkit on the city's website for restaurants to go to. Um, they've uh, got a couple different files on there for restaurant guidelines, uh, the fever uh, signs, uh, as well as a couple of inf information posters and things like that. Listen, and you, again, you can find the link on, uh, on the city's website. Um, yeah, Josh, I wanted to bring up one other thing, too. I know that this whole recove effort is more than just about reopening the restaurants. It's about helping them with marketing and branding, and BLDG does a great job, Jay Becker and his team. Do you want to talk a moment about that in terms of beyond the next six weeks or whatever, and how this effort that you're under, undergoing may help these restaurants not only reopen successfully, but strive, but uh, uh, thrive and stay alive in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, uh, there's a couple different uh, potential art activations uh, that we've come up with that'll kind of be clever, fun, that, you know, hopefully we'll get people out walking around. As John said, you're not going to be able to wait in restaurants. So, um, you know, hopefully with a couple of fun, tasteful uh, uh, art 
uh, activations throughout the city. We'll get a little bit of uh, people walking around, uh, maybe enjoying some of the public parks and things of that nature. Um, we've talked about doing some fun uh, signage with chalk paint and stencils, uh, just kind of directing people down certain footpaths and uh, things like that, just trying to draw attraction to the rate, uh, to the uh, restaurants. But uh, the other thing Jay and his team have committed to is, you know, this is going to be an evolving situation. You know, we're going to get it open and uh, things, some things are going to be right, some things are going to be wrong and, uh, you know, and, you know, we'll keep the uh, creativity uh, side of things going and, uh, you know, we'll We'll keep working with the restaurants and uh you know as we uh, identify more needs and things of that nature jay and his team are ready to go okay i think we're gonna begin to wrap up and since you just spoke josh we'll stay with you any last comments or any information or phone numbers or emails or addresses or anything where restaurants want to reach out to you and seek out your help that haven't so far how do they get a hold of you Right now, they can find all the links. Uh, my contact information, everything is on the city ordinance. Uh, it's on the executive order. It's on the, uh, the outdoor seating license permit. Uh, uh, so I would uh, get, get uh, you, you can find all my information there. Um, you know, use the city's website as a resource. Um, uh, you know, there's uh, three or four links up there now, including the press release that went out yesterday that has uh, also has my email information in there, um, you know, uh, but call to City Hall and ask for me. Uh, they've got the phone forwarded to my cell phone, but uh, yeah, I'll be around. Okay, anything else? Any other things you want to share from the perspective of the task force, Josh? Uh, just, you know, stay safe and to be responsible and, uh, you know, try to encourage the ones around you to do the same thing. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. John, from the perspective of the Restaurant Association, uh, you have a great organization. Not a lot of restaurants or not as many as should I would say, are take advantage of your services and, and join your group. What, what kinds of things are the Restaurant Association doing? And just in summing up your final thoughts, uh, how they can be. Uh, um, you, you, know, you know, that's one. Um, if um, you have any uh, questions, a great resource is uh, Stacy Roof at the, uh, the State Restaurant Association. Um, if you get on a, um, just get on your computer and type in Kentucky Restaurant Association, her cell phone's there. Um, she, she will actually respond within the hour. She's really good. So if you have any questions, you can call Stacy Roof, um, who is the CEO of the Kentucky State Restaurant Association. And if anyone has any questions for myself, my contact, uh, info is on the Hofbrau House Newport website. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. And then, Steve, uh, any final thoughts from you and any um, website addresses, email addresses, anything uh, where people can contact you to get their questions answered specifically? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I uh, strongly encourage people to go to our website, nkyhealth.org. Uh, a lot of Toolkits on there, a lot of the things we've talked about today, there's actually documentation or, or uh, sources on there. And, and call us up. You know, we want to be a resource. Uh, we're here to help businesses. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can call us at our main line, 341-4151. That's our environmental uh, office. And we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that we can related to this or other issues. Uh, but certainly we want everybody to be successful. We're here to be part one of those tools to be able to do that. Great. We did get another question that I think is important to answer because I don't think we covered this at all related to PPE. Um, you know, with the cost of gloves on the market, and I know a number of businesses in Covington that were supposed to open a week or two ago, uh, dental offices and things like that, uh, couldn't get the PPP equip PPE equipment necessary to reopen. Are businesses on their own for that? Or uh, Steve or uh, John or Josh, if you know, but we'll start with Steve. Does, uh, what are some resources for that so that businesses are fully equipped with the protective gear so that they can open safely for customers? Sure, good question. Uh, you know, they, they are, the business is responsible for getting their PPE, but having said that, uh, you know, other than finding it on the, the open market, I know, it, you know, I think we've got the link on our website, but if not, uh, the Chamber uh, of Commerce, Northern Kentucky Chamber's got a link. Uh, that directs them to places where they can get uh, PPE at primarily mask and gloves. Uh, they have to pay for it, but uh, you know, if you know, working as a group, maybe through uh, uh, you know John's uh, group, if there's any way that they could look into buying in, in bulk as you know 
uh, in volume, then that might help. And we are getting, we being the health department, are getting some cloth face mask uh, sent to us from the state. Um, that they're donated ones though from other manufacturers or in some cases people making them themselves uh, in bulk. Uh, and so when we get a decent uh, supply of those, we also would um, make those available to restaurants at no charge. Uh, John, does the Restaurant Association, do they have any resources? Um, yes, there's actually links on the Kentucky Restaurant Association website. And um, um, what we did is we um, I got, a, uh, like a lot of your food purveyors um, are carrying PPE, like uh, gloves. You should probably already have gloves anyway. Um, you know, like we have, have always used gloves. Um, but I know we purchased um, gloves through uh, Cisco and um, uh, some other companies. And you can also, like uh, Steve said, um, you can get on the uh, Chamber website. And that's where we were able to get hand sanitizer. Um, and it's fairly easy to click on the link and just purchase it. Yeah, uh, Josh, were you gonna add something to there? No, like I said, the one place that I saw was the uh, Kentucky Chamber as well, yep. Yeah, and I know the CBC, we, we are uh, looking into getting cloth uh, reusable masks uh, for folks and businesses. And we're actually at the CBC trying to assess the need uh, just for the masks. Uh, but we also have some resources that we listed on our web, website, many of them the same ones the, uh, the chamber provides too. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of great uh, ways to get those. So, um, so with, uh, with uh, really no more questions and we let uh, all three of you kind of uh, give your summation thoughts, I think we'll close there. We wanna thank Steve Devine of the Northern Kentucky Health District. Uh, John Ellison of Hofbrau House and the Northern Kentucky Restaurant Association and Josh, Josh Rhodes from Recov. Uh, thank you all for your uh, participation today and comments. Um, this is recorded for anybody that uh, wants to hear this again or to share it with uh, people that weren't able to be on the call today. Uh, we can get you that information. So uh, let us know that uh, and we can uh, facilitate that. So. Thank you all for being a part of the webinar today. And with that, we will uh, close and adjourn. Have a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. Lots of success to everybody this weekend. Thank Thanks. you all. Bye.